And I thought multiple times, like, like, just put your arms up. Just go for it. Arms down here says I'm white and I'm sorry. Did I say that? You would not stop saying Did it. I say that? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm glad you remember that. Yeah. I remember thinking Constantly, that. Constantly. Every time one of the Indian songs came on, you're like, remember people. I'm white and I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I don't want to be bothered. G-Man. Is there anything for dessert or something? Spider-Man. Yay. I need help with doing a push-up. This is still going? Yep. Ah, 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 ah. Thanks, please. Having a good old guy. Sit. I was just listening to the jazz cast today. I oh, yeah? just got up to the bit where you were talking about how you worried about Ellie and how you're going to have to raise up all the cables. Raise them gay. Yeah. Um... That's a good plug for anyone listening. Um, we are we released a two hour jazz cast, which is just a just like a just a randomly done podcast when Ben just happened to be here and we just sat down for two hours and talked shit. So it's a little less it was planned. It was it was good vibes. That's what we want to do it again. So that'll release on that's on Patreon now and that'll be available on the regular channel in like five to ten weeks. I haven't quite worked out the timeline. I wanted to be substantial enough that people want to join the Patreon to hear it. But um, yeah, it's uh, it was lots of fun and it's available now on the Patreon. Is it going to be a recurring thing? Yeah, yeah we we're talking about it. And, All right. Um, Ben's keen. <clears throat> All right, let's just jump in. Let's do it. Woo, GMAT. Yay. Hello and welcome to episode 216 of the GMAT podcast. Can you tell uh, me if this is funny? Because Beck didn't laugh. <laughs> she said... She said, I'm fist deep in Twitter. And I said, yeah, well, I'm piss deep in shitter. <laughs> today's, oh my God, you today's episode of the Geo Podcast is brought to you by our merch, which is here on my body. I just released a couple new shirts. Teespring.com forward slash stores forward slash the real GMAT. Go get yourself some merch. Uh, that intro is brought to you by me. We need intros, people. Send them to contact at the real GMAT.tv. Submit them to Discord. You don't have to do this music, by the way. I add this. It's not that... <laughs> this is so aggressive. Um, if you want to support the show and get access to the post-show as well as some extra two-hour content, go to patreon.com forward slash the GMAP podcast. Cut the music. Cut that fucking music. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Matt. Uh, I'm the host of the GMAP podcast. I'm joined today just by Bep. And Ellie. And Ellie's there She's currently well. licking her little cool. Um, We were going to do a regular podcast today and Ben's a bit unwell um, and Aiden's busy and it kind of worked out where um, they were both just like, we we both can't do it today. And I was like, okay, and we're getting close to G stream. So we're running out of time. So now me and Beck are doing it after hours, after dark. We've turned the lights down. Yeah. I'll say, so yes, it's quite dark, but um, you know, whatever. If you're listening on Spotify, which most of you people are, you won't even bloody know the difference. You can probably, you can hear the dark mood in our voices. It's low, it's slow. Yeah. Uh, 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 no. Um, how long has you been on a podcast? Were you on one like two weeks ago, or oh. has it been weeks and weeks? I came in at the very end of the jazz cast. But like before that, have you been on one for? Um, I know it hasn't. Been, it's been like five weeks or like five episodes. But were you on like one in the middle, or have you been? Yeah, on I think there was one. Oh, remember we did the back to back ones. I was there for those. So it seemed like I was around for a while, but I would just did that. Okay, one day. yeah, 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 yeah. You've been yeah, I've missed it. Miss, miss all you guys. It's hard to plan. There's been times when I've been in the house, but I've been working, and I can just hear you guys all laughing and jacking yeah. each other off through the walls. I'm like, Mwah. yeah. I wish I was there. It's hard to, um, because we usually do mornings, but you've been busy in, on the mornings, and and then the afternoons have been a bit harder as well. I've had to push it later. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna we after G stream we're getting back together to work out what the best time is moving forward because we've all had I think everyone ex- no you and Aiden mostly have both had recent significant schedule changes yeah so we have to um and to be fair I haven't <laughs> it's my own fault I haven't factored the podcast into my new schedule at all so it's every week it's come up and I haven't even realized I'm like no oh, shit well I haven't. I haven't organized myself very well, so you might as well just do it without me over and over again. And if I thought about it for two fucking seconds, I could probably figure it out. Yeah. 
whatever. That was the vibe moving forward with Aiden as well, where we said, let's just like, let's just be loosey goosey at the, about the podcast. Mm-hmm. Who, whoever can make it, can make it. I, I don't want to feel the pressure of trying to include everybody when people's schedules are difficult. And I don't want you guys to feel the pressure of having to do it. You know, I just want to be like, just join when you can do it. The problem is when we don't have you, the visuals are crap. So that's that. I'd, Tell me about it. It's been yeah. It's been uh, that's the bit I don't like. But you know what? I think the, I think the different combos are interesting. I think they all. I don't think you lose necessarily losing anything when somebody can't be here because yeah. you just get a different dynamic, and I think that's cool too. Our dynamics usually end up in deep philosophical conversations about <laughs> what I'm doing with my life. We're going to talk about our sex life at some point. Are we? As we always fall back to that when it's just you and I on a podcast. I've wanted to. What's going to get ear balls? <laughs> I've wanted to throw myself at you for the last two days straight, just so we're on the same page. If we're talking about sex life. But um, we kick on a bed at different times. But Yeah, we are all back to front at the moment. Yeah, my, bo- my body clock's fucked up since that 8.30 a.m. Since that last of a stream, which was last week. Was last week last of a week? It's got to be. It has to be earlier than that because I feel like this has been going on for... But weeks. I've sort of like I've sort of taken it in stride and gone with like a whole new like the nighttime is my time and now I'm getting so much stuff done in the nighttime like little GMAT chores that have been on my board for a long time. I've just been wiping off like the social media stuff, getting stuff out to people that I hadn't yet done, um, uh, 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 the jazz cast and getting all that together and then a couple little gameology things. Like I've just been able to just organize myself a little bit. I'm going to get my sleep schedule back on, but I'm not desperate at the moment to get back to normal. Ah, all little changes. You'll see me. <laughs> Whatever. What? Well, we barely see each other. I, that's And it was ac- exactly the same when it was the other way, which is how it usually is, which is me staying up all night and you going to bed early. Mm-hmm. But what always ends up happening is we don't ever see each other because our cycles of the day don't overlap with each other yeah. very much. Yeah. Which is sad. I miss you. Yeah, but if we had a... I mean, we see each other as much as a regular couple sees each other now. But we demand more than that, usually. We're needy people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I won't apologise for it. Yeah. Um, no, I think what we need to do is you need to go back to the old shitty ways. So your old shitty behaviour. And we can both just be shitty together. Yeah. No, no, I'm going to I'm gonna come back over to the light side momentarily. I'm just going to have a couple more days of being a piece of shit getting ahead of all this stuff it's good it's fun i've nearly done the i've nearly finished except i'm really taking control i'm taking control of that time you don't know what i do in the night sorry um so i uh i i've nearly done the social media stuff and that's going to be a big weight off my shoulders um and getting the gmat videos all together that's been really fun anyways enough talking about that no one cares about the fucking mm-hmm. behind the scenes shit so I keep wanting to have sex with you and it hasn't lined up. <laughs> it hasn't lined up. <laughs> Just in the last two days. It lines up. We're a very similar height. That's yeah. why I like you. Jeez. Um, that's too much. No, no, that's good. Um, What else is going on? I have notes, but I don't want to touch the notes for do you a wanna, while. Do you want to talk about any of the many, many social engagements we had over the weekend? Yeah, we went to- We did so much stuff. This was a- We never do- so. I know we're going to say this- and then people are going to be like, oh, that's after a while I can't tell them out. I'm sad, I'm sad, I'm sad, but we don't do anything. We don't like to. It's not our It's not our highest priority. What, doing stuff? Yeah, if we could pick an, between going out into the world or just staying home in our gym jams, watching scrubs and mm-hmm. eating bad food, we would always go for that. Mm. We just both really like that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we are on. But no, we trekked out. Yeah, we trekked out a bunch. I feel like there was multi, like from Wednesday through to, I remember I did the Wednesday night stream and then Thursday something happened. What did I do Thursday? Thursday was the wedding. Oh, that's right. We had part one of the wedding. Yeah. Which was an 8 a.m. wedding. It was, it was, a the, the bride was Indian. The, um, the groom was not. <laughs> so white. Beautiful ginger. Um. But uh, it was an 8 a.m. wedding, which we didn't really understand. But then we later learnt was like a thing where Indian weddings could start at like two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, midnight. Like they could they anytime. could start any time because um, the two people getting married have stars. Uh, what's the process to getting stars? Is it is it? Um, oh, I don't, I don't really know any of it. It's just that it, yeah, it's what's, about what's the what's the thing called when you when you when you 
look at stars and it means shit. Is that astrology? Something, some sort of astro- uh, astrology thing where you are, you have a, a star and then you have to wait for your two stars to line up right down to the hour um, uh, on a day. And so they had to start the wedding at 8 a.m. so that by, I think it was midday, someone said at a particular time, so that between like midday and one, they would actually be getting married or just doing the last piece of the puzzle during that hour um, because it's important. So that's why it started at 8 a.m. because we had to, by midday, be them at the end of their ceremony. And it was, yeah, it was like a four hour it was thing. fascinating. It I was very it. fascinating. I was sleepy, but like it was, yeah, it was really cool. I got like a second wind at some point. Yeah. Like I got there, I was pretty knackered. It was fun and it, it was, um, the atmosphere was electric. Yeah. It was a little less electric for me. <laughs> well, yeah, to be fair, they were all my friends. It was my, yeah. my old high school friend getting married. and I'm surprised I got the invite. There's a lot of people who don't invite um, partners it's mm. not. It's not. It's not required anymore. People can just is invite people. No, this no. is my first one. This is, by the way, my first like peer wedding. I've only ever been to like uncles and dad, people's dads, fam, like weddings. No. Never, never to somebody I've gone to school with. So that I, was pretty cool. I don't know if it's a new thing, but it, it, it's definitely not a requirement now to be like, like we know you, but we don't know your partner, so we're not inviting your partner because we don't want to pay for your shit. Like it's become. I, I think it's. It probably used to be that way because people were a bit more polite. Back in the day, in mm-hmm. a different way, you know, they would spit in a coloured person's face, but they would, um, you know. Things have, maybe were less expensive and nowadays it's a bit harder to scrape the money together. Probably more like that, yeah. yeah. So now we're less polite and we're just like, hey, fucking not inviting this No cunt. knobhead. I'm not paying an extra $200 so that your, your, your walking dick can come with you. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah. this walking dick got to go. Yeah, and I was, was really, I was very happy that you could. And we you had to not to skip ahead, but I was very glad you were there for the reception. <laughs> that was way better for me. Yeah, the, the reception f- was lit. The first, the, so it was back to the original wedding. I, I, I got to know everybody, but it was eight in the morning and there was no drinks. There was no alcohol out or yeah, meat. Yeah. Um, so it was an 8 a.m. wedding and trying to connect with people who I don't really know. I, I did an all right job. I thought so. Yeah. Everybody um, was sort of a bit out of it because of the time of day, but. We all uh, did our best. If we had to sit there like in pews, like a Catholic wedding or something like that, and it went for that long, yeah, I would like fall you asleep. wouldn't be able to move. I would have fallen asleep. Yeah, but they were they were like serving food the whole way through. Yeah. Like they gave us breakfast, and then later on there's a little buffet table, and like people were you were able to mill around. Yeah, and like you could get up and go to the toilet. Like the the pressure was not on to stay in your seat and eyes forward the whole time. Like you could sort of pick your moments to tune in and out, which I thought was really nice. Yeah, it was hard not to tune. It was hard to tune out though, because there was so much strange stuff going on. Well, strange. Strange, strange. to me. Yeah. You know. It also, was. anything that I don't do is going to be strange. Yeah. I'm not saying that it's strange. I mean, actually, I am saying it's strange. It's not what I'm used to, so it, it's it's strange. It is strange to me. Probably not strange to an Indian person, but um, there were some fun things in the ceremony. Yeah, a lot of milk. A lot of milk. <laughs> when there was like, like they uh, wash their feet in milk and they pour milk over this thing and it's like, I thought it was going to be special milk. But then someone like holy milk, like like some kind of yeah, something like that, or just got from the cow that morning, or something like that. But then (laughs) the mother of the bride was just walking across the the ceremony area with a two liter carton of pools, straight from the IGA on the way. The um the the father of the bride had to wash the groom's feet in milk. Mm -hmm. That was interesting bit. Um, there was a thing where where the groom holds the bride's toe and takes seven steps. And on each step, he says some shit. I love that one. You could tell they were they couldn't could barely contain their laughter on yeah, that one. They Beautiful. were cute. Yeah. Um, the bit that that uh, had some interesting connotations was um, uh, so, so there was a big chunk of the wedding first, the ceremony, which had the bride, the bride wasn't involved in. It was all groom shit. I loved it. It was like it was building the suspense. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. It was like it was telling a whole story. It's like, yeah. okay, we'll talk about the groom first and then the moment you've all been waiting for. The bride. Like, I think it, and like not like a, a um, you know, when are men going to get their chance sort of thing, but I did think it was like it was more – uh, 
there was more things for the groom to do than in a traditional wedding that I'm used to. Yeah, it was refreshing because usually the guy just stands at the front yeah. and looks a bit stupid for an hour. And, right. and I don't want it to come across like a when the men get their chance sort of thing. But, but you're right. It, it is, is a wedding between two people and I think both people, whether it, uh, it doesn't even have to be a man or woman, if it's a gay wedding, you know, I think people should have equal parts in the wedding yeah. to do their thing and that doesn't seem to come across in a in the weddings I'm used to. Mm. Yeah, it's I think about the groom, about uh, the bride. Yeah, the bride's big day and happy wife, happy life, all that sort of shit. Um, mm -hmm. This felt more like, you know, it's still significantly more about the bride, but like you said, it was a story. Like we built up to it, and then the bride's entrance was a big moment. Still felt like the the bride was a big deal, even though they had equal sort of things to do. Yeah, I think we are. We need to normalise grooms caring about their weddings. Yeah. I mean, you're both you're both signing away your lives to each other. You yeah. might as well have equal say. I expect you to have equal say in ours. And yeah. I don't. If you want to put penis paintings up, then you know we they can talk about on. it. We can talk about it. Um, so they come out, and the, the the groom stands behind a sheet. They've got like a sheet up blocking the groom so that he can't see the bride. Because traditionally, in an Indian wedding, it would be a uh, What's the word? Arranged. I don't know if that's still the case, but I think this was how that tr tradition played out. And he made it like the the um, the uh, priest equivalent. Made yeah, I'm a, not sure what he would be called. Made a joke. The where celebrant. Like, now I assume you guys haven't seen each other because he was he kept making jokes about tr the tradition because. Yeah. There was stuff that they couldn't do. Yeah, like the elephant. Like yeah, normally yeah. They, she would ride in on an elephant, um, but obviously. They did have can't do that in a town hall in the in the middle of Melbourne. But so he drew one on the floor. I don't know if he actually drew it or if he just like made a symbolic outline or something yeah. of the elephant and then got the groom to like step over it or I don't know something like that. But it was nice. It he was did nice. It with the horse as well. Yeah, it was nice to see the ways that they kind of changed with the times or with the ge geographical obstacles. Yeah. So they said the thing about like um, obviously you guys haven't seen each other. Like, wink, wink. Mm -hmm. And every single... Oh, another strange thing, not to get lost in my own uh, story, but I know this is generally how it works. You have the bride's family on one side and the groom's family on the other in a wedding. But because it was an Indian wedding and a white wedding, it was like the room was segregated and it was super strange. Yeah, it was actually. It, <laughs> it, was it, it does it, sort of hit the eyes wrong. Yeah, when you walk into a room, <laughs> it's a fully like, segregated oh. room. Yeah. But that can't be the first time that something like that's happened in a wedding context <laughs> where uh, couples of different heritage, different race, marry and but anyways. Yeah, of course. It so it was um it but was by the reception it was beautiful and everybody was sitting wherever. Yeah. Um so but the the reason that came to my mind was cuz when he made that joke nobody on the Indian side laughed <laughs> and all these white people were like, "Ha, of course they have seen each other. They probably boned this morning sort of thing." <laughs> um just uh, knock one out before we get there, love. Yeah. And then uh, he pulls it down and, you know, I guess traditionally when they pull the sheet down, they see each other for the first time ever, which is wild. Um, I don't know. I think we're assuming that. I don't know if that's necessarily what he was saying. He might have just been saying that thing of the, the groom not, not seeing the bride on the day of. I think I can – I would safely assume. I would, I would give a 99% – Assurance. I just want to put a meant. disclaimer in case we're horribly wrong about all of this because we're basing all of our knowledge on the Simpsons. on a celebrant whose microphone cut out every three seconds, so we didn't get all the no, information. No, no, but, but he's doing a ceremony that's traditional. I'm, I don't, I, I, I know I, I literally know this just from the Simpsons. But Indian weddings aren't traditionally, um, arranged. Hindu ones are. Let's say Hindu. that this was a Hindu wedding, and not all Indian people are Hindu. So. Either way, I th that, uh, what happened on stage gave me the impression that that was the what what that meant when they hit him and hit her and they pulled the sheet down, mm. um, and the joke he made about and I assume you guys are, this is the first time you've seen each other sort of thing. Uh, what was I saying? So they do that, and then they have to like um, get on each at the shoulders. They lift up the groom, they lift up the bride on the shoulders, and they have like these flower lassos that they've got to catch each other <laughs> with. And she was like dodging and stuff like that. This is very adorable. And I was, and I wondered, like, what happens if you don't catch them? I imagine you'd probably reset, like, okay. uh, like ping pong or something. I don't know. So I thought, like, what if you had an arranged marriage where the sheet comes down? You're like, oh god, it's Kevin. <laughs> you throw it over your shoulder. And then they're trying to lasso the other person. You're like, no fucking way. <laughs> that was the that, that, the that was what was going through my head then. 
And it got to the point where I was at the edge of my seat, like, for the love of God, catch her. Like, <laughs> which had different we'll connotations. We'll all have to go home. For the love of fuck, I'm so worried that you're going to say no. Like, this is the equivalent. I want my onion bhaji. <laughs> So uh, that was no, the the lasso catching was fun. Um, uh, it was a bit later on where they both had to put their hand in a jar to try and get a ring. That yeah, was also ring. fun. The, the, ring, the actual yeah. ring. Um, anything else? Uh, um, white strange to us that happened in that. Oh, ceremony? I just really liked seeing his parents, who I've known since I was twelve years old, who were just like the most laid back Aussie as can be. Dad plays golf every Sunday, sort of. And then they're up there in their saris and their traditional dress and they're, like, doing it. And they're yeah. going balls to the wall because they love their son. And I just – that choked me up a little bit. Yeah. That was really beautiful. Yeah. And they they were um, – I mean, not to jump too far ahead, but even the reception, um, he said uh, – I uh, oh, sorry, I shouldn't say his name, but your friend who was getting married, he had a really great way of putting it where he, he, he pointed out – that his parents have been uh, just ready for anything, ready to be a part of this thing without suggesting that it's super strange. Yeah. Like saying, like being like, oh, they were up for anything because this is crazy. Like, but he had the right way of saying it where he was like, this is their culture. This is what they do. This is blah, blah, blah. And my, our parents were there and they were ready to jump in. Mm. He would he worded it so well. Yeah, uh, I'm and just I could saying never they're, they're, of a, they're of a certain generation and demographic where they, it could have very easily gone the other way and they yeah. could have been like oh, i'm not doing that shit you they know. were just accepting and yeah. ready to jump in and do everything that and i don't imagine at any point they were like so but do where's the bit where the bride gets brought in by the group like doing a whatever the yeah the and I, I guess they didn't they weren't interested in pushing for a western ceremony as yeah. well so i guess it yeah they were cool with it yeah i um so it was lots of fun and uh, it finished up at like 2 p.m. So we got to go home and we went home and we got <laughs> high and we watched Scrubs and we ate bad food. It's so exciting when we – it's so rare that we both have the day off together. Oh, and we'd like totally wiped that day. Yeah, we both we both like, got to work off. off. Yeah, because we thought – we didn't know. We thought maybe we'd be there all day and all night. Mm-hmm. So we just – yeah, we wrote the whole day off and then suddenly we're going home at 2 o'clock and we're like oh, – We had a nap. What are we going to do? had a nap. Got high, ate bad food, washed scrubs. That was awesome. It was awesome. It's a great day. Great wedding. And then Friday morning, we um, we had a uh, a trivia night. Um, we won't get Friday, into that Friday night. Friday night, the following night. Um, which I mean, it does. You know, that's just one thing we had to do that day. But it's also after a regular day's work. Like we had a regular <laughs> day, and yeah. then we went to a trivia night. So two nights in a row, we were just we had thing. Two days in a row, we had some shit on. Um, and remember, we're hermits. Okay. We are hermits. And then the next morning, Saturday, uh, at midday, we go to my auntie's birthday lunch, which fuck you know. Oh God bless her! It was a it was paid for. It was a five course Italian. Oh, meal. we were mooching big time. That was a big the, yeah. The entire that was day. a whole was a big day of mooching. Yeah, and the, like the drinks were free as well. Like I, I, when they said, "Do you want a drink?" I was like, mm, "Do I want to buy a drink?" Oh, I know. I I have to say, I took advantage of that a little bit. I yeah, had a, had a couple of glasses of wine. I'm like, well, this would be too expensive for me to justify any other time, so I'm doing it. It was definitely because we got there and it was one of those those dinner settings where the. Or, there were multiple forks and knives on the table. Yeah, it was being. So you're like, uh oh, this is. This it was is the intimidating. Real deal. Yeah. There were. I keep telling people, there were fresh olives. I had never seen fresh olives in my life. I'm like, what are those neon green things? <laughs> olives are brown and black <laughs> and come in brine. We're such pieces of shit. <laughs> I'm like, and I'm eating it. I'm like, there's a pip in the middle. Usually, Coles takes that out. Oh, that's why you had a half-eaten one. Yeah, because I didn't know I didn't know what you were supposed to. And eventually, I was like, "All right, I should just pop the whole thing in my mouth and then spit the pit out." But I've been eating around the pit (laughs) because I just, you know, never learned. Never had a stone fruit or something. I guess you don't shove a a whole stone fruit in your mouth, do you? Um, I have had stone fruit. Yes. So uh, stone fruit. (laughs) Then also there was like there was like arancini balls, and I was like, I've had an arancini ball before. I love this. Chucked in my mouth. I was like, this is the best thing. I've ever eaten. It was covered in that like truffle shit. Oh, it was outstanding. So it was five courses, but it wasn't like, they weren't like crazy big. It was just like arancini balls was a course. It, everything was like the perfect serving. Yeah. There was never anything that was like, oh, I could have done with less of that or could have done with more of that except maybe the pasta. But everything else was like just perfectly portioned. And I like, loved the pasta. I could have eaten more of the pasta. There was too much pasta. Like we all, there was pasta left over. 
and I could have kept eating it, but I was like, you know what, I'll, I'll wait because there is another round, which was like proper meat and salads. Oh and yeah, shit. yeah. Oh man. Um, and fish, which was delicious. Um, yeah. So we were eating like kings that day. And then dessert as well, which was just fucking good, really good. And I yeah, free drinks, and we were in like a cellar, a wine cellar. We had a private room. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was super fancy, super fancy. People, fancy. It was like a huge table when, like at each end, people could like whisper to each other and like still be understood. That's how private it was. Yeah. Um, Whereas anytime we go to a restaurant, us schmucks are fucking shoulder to shoulder with the table next to us. Yeah. <laughs> There's no such thing as privacy. Yeah. It was just like, yeah. It was also at a winery. So like it was like the setting was beautiful outside. And then we went inside and it was this cool little just private dining. And then we went back outside and took some photos. It was um, lovely. It was very nice. And I'm going to look up that place because it's actually not that far from us. I want to see if there's anything on that menu we can afford because I'd love to go back there, just you and I. Yeah. Ooh. We're not going to pay for people to go there. It'd be steep. It would have been a, a heavy cost on her. Oh, yeah. That entire lunch would have easily I been. I think it was you, Grandpa. I don't know if that was a joke. No, no, it, it was It was? Yeah. It would have been a few thousand dollars. I was I was doing the maths in my head today, actually. Yeah. And I was like, ooh, that really would start to add up. There were a lot of people at that table. Maybe they got like a package or something. I don't well, know. I mean, it's a package, but you're also like booking the room. Yeah. Oh, the man. drinks, like, and it, was, it wasn't it was cheap. It wasn't cheap champagne and cheap uh, wine and cheap, you know, the the drinks that they were bringing out weren't were the cheap versions of everything. And yeah. the, they went through bottles and bottles. Yeah, I kept I kept looking around thinking, fuck, I hope we make it like this one day. <laughs> this is my idea of making it. Yeah. Um, so then we left there and we had to go straight to part two of the wedding, which was the reception on a different day. Yeah. Um, and it was a, that was a little more. Uh, I, I said it was a little more Western, but it was just the fact that they were wearing suits now. Yeah. But apart from that, it was still Indian food, Indian yeah. music, and yeah. Indian people. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, like Indian. Like it was, there yeah. were, it was an Indian uh, uh, vibe. Yeah, but um, there was like cake and a DJ, and it was like a buffet. You know, it was all. Yeah, but the DJ was Indian. And he was playing Indian music. That's true. You know. And they were bops. So I shouldn't assume he was Indian. Yeah. Who knows. Um. But he was playing Indian music. Um, and I went there with no intention of... You said you drive and I would drink. And I was like, okay. But I had no intention. Yeah, that felt like a fair rule because they weren't your friends yet. Yeah. But, you know, it was like, it's my... I think we should instate that rule from now on because I think it's fair. I think You if, did say that. Yeah, I think if they're not your people, then you're the one that gets to be drunk to deal with it. Or... Or you organise a way home. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So if I'm if it's my party, I'm driving or getting the Uber. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't my party. It was Beck's party. So I was the Uber. We went and we sat on a table and there was an open sat bar. Sat on table. When I found out it was an open bar, that's when the game changed. Because I didn't even think about that. But of course, it's oh, a wedding. Oh, yes. See, I, it, didn't, it barely occurred to me too. I was like, why is everybody getting so fucking drunk? <laughs> oh, it's because it's free. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the second it was open bar, it was uh, it was game on mole, and I was <laughs> drinking. I was drinking. I was really drinking. And, and then- also, I have these friends from high school. I won't name them, but I think some of them listen. Who are <laughs> haven't changed since high school in the sense that they love to binge drink. They yeah. proudly will say that, yeah. and they love to push it on other people if they think it's going to be good for a laugh. They did that to me a number of times growing yeah. up, and I. You know, partly my fault for accepting the drinks, but... Yeah, it's hardly pushing they, when... Every time, like, you barely get done with one and somebody's placing the next one down in front of you, sometimes two, <laughs> and you're like, okay. The, the, it did. It got to the point where uh, it's going to be hard not to say names. We're not going to say last names. So your mate Reese on my left brought me a beer and yeah. your mate Sam behind me on the other table brought me a beer and I was like, oh, this is perfect. And then your friend Haim comes over with a bunch of scotches to, yeah. sh- to shoot. And he passes them around. He's like, I'm at. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I have one. I have one. And you couldn't understand why I was like frowning at them and being like, no, don't do this. Because I knew what was coming. And you're like, oh, they're being so generous. I'm like, uh-oh. I was getting, I was trying to like, like gauge their drinking for a little while. And then when they gave me the scotch and uh, Sam's partner drank it, was like, oh, 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 and then Haim sipped it and, and was kind of like, he wasn't ready to just knock it back. And then I just knocked it back. And I was like, oh, I'm going to be fine with these people. Yeah. I can, I can, I can drink them under you the table. You wanted to do ice breaking in the form of competitive drinking. Yes. Yes. Don't Which I'm totally fine kids. with. Um, honestly, if you look, if you're old enough and you want to break ice by drinking, do what you want to do. <laughs> Maybe not to the level that. I mean, I didn't get kicked out, so I think I handled, yeah. I handled my uh, my beverage better than everybody else. Yeah, you all were pretty. You pretty you, munted. You were pretty munted. They um, all were, and there were a couple of people falling down, and 
things being thrown and yep. after we left, yeah, they got it. Got eject- they got ejected. <laughs> I was there when the shirt was unbuttoned. I wasn't there when the shirt was off. Yeah. Um, I was there. But this- It this, was like nightclub behavior at a wedding. I didn't like dancing and I was dancing and having fun. And can I say to, you know, proud of myself, I was stone cold sober and I was dancing. Yeah, you I were was really like, getting it. Didn't I even occur to me. You know when you're drunk and you forget that other people aren't yeah, drunk? Yeah, yeah, I was relying on that. I was relying on everybody around me to be drunk enough to forget that I wasn't and just try and blend in. That's yeah. the key. Sober people, that's the key. Just try and pretend to be drunk. <laughs> Yeah, we were grinding on each other on the dance <laughs> I was floor. like, let's be that couple that makes everybody else uncomfortable. <laughs> and then your ass was on my penis. Okay. It was making movements. Hi, um, yeah, so uh, I danced like a motherfucker. You did. You danced well. Um, now, I don't remember how this happened. I remember being at the wedding and then we were at another party. Yeah. I don't you, remember the trip there. Yeah, you were pretty bad. Or leaving. We were leaving, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I was worried about you. You you turned out pretty well the next day, considering I was really worried I was going to have have to be holding your hair back and vomiting. <laughs> Here's the, my exact memory: was um, I'm st- I'm I'm on the dance floor. Uh, your friend Reese. W- everyone's got cups. Everyone's got cups of liquor because yes. they had spirits on the bar. Um, and people are dancing aggressively and spilling their liquid all over this wooden dance floor. And then your mate Reese is dancing and he's doing like a, a ridiculous running man and then slips, saves himself, and then slips fully on his ass. Nearly breaks my foot in the process. I remember that. And then I remember some intense dancing otherwise. There it was. It was all very intense. Very intense dancing. There was a moment there. Not, to, not to keep bringing it back to the, the cultural thing, but when the Indian songs were playing, like as you would imagine, all of the Indian people – rushed to the stage, yeah. up to the dance floor and started dancing because obviously those are the songs they know. And it would get to the point where it was like one Western song, one Indian song, one Western song. So the Western people were staying for – like they w- everybody was staying for each other's because you can't, you can't walk on for the white songs and walk <laughs> off again, yeah, like, yeah. you know. Yeah. So there was this really funny thing happening where the white – the whiteies were like – when the Indian songs were playing, like, do we copy their dance moves or is that insensitive? And like a few people were going for it and were like I think following I might everybody else. And uh, we were all just, me and my friends, we were all just having this spirited debate of like, will they will they think that it's a celebration or mocking or like, do we do it? And then you were like, what were you, what was your catchphrase through the night? Do you remember? I said, I said, um, I don't, I don't know if I said this out loud because I thought this a hundred times. Because I saw them dancing, and not to sidetrack or come back to it, but what I really liked, they it was all these indie people really gave me the confidence to get out there and dance. Yeah, because cause they, they when loved they were it. dancing, it's 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 not even about like rhythm and like looking good. Like <laughs> there were arms going up, and there, it was just like feeling, I think it looks good to them. It does, and I did look good, but it was more I mean, it, does, it yeah. was more like feeling the music and just not worrying about how you look. Yeah, we're very self conscious people, and I thought multiple times like like just put your arms up, just go for it. Arms down here says I'm white, and I'm sorry. Did I say that? You would not stop saying. Did I say that? Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! I'm glad you remember that. Yeah, I remember thinking constantly, that constantly every time one of the Indian songs came on. You like remember people? I'm white. And I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my god! I was really fucked up because I remember thinking that, but I don't remember once saying it. Arms <laughs> up here, sir. So, uh, arms down here says I'm white. And I'm sorry. Arms up here says so you don't know what I am. <laughs> Did I say that? I don't know you might have. Yeah. Because <laughs> what is that from? Modern Family. Modern family. <laughs> Yeah, I was uh, sorry. I shouldn't keep doing the dance, <laughs> but that's what I was like. Like, and it was a lot of like, like it's weird. It's I, I don't know how to describe it. But you, you people seen Indian people there's dance. There's a name. There's a name. But for it was it. Like, it's just like feel like, and it was awesome. And when there was shit playing, I just like I was just like, just, let's just pretend the music's here, and I'm carrying it over <laughs> here, and I'm over. I fucking had a great time. Yeah, there was a point there where I'm like, ah, fuck it. I think it's I think it's fine, and I started yeah. copying. Like, I mean, that's half- I wasn't making my own stuff up. I'm like, I'll just I'll get an idea of what they're doing, and then I'll just try and do my best. I mean, I can't dance at the best of times, so yeah. it was gonna look embarrassing no matter what. But I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna get into the spirit of things. A white ginger Australian boy is marrying a, a tiny little Indian lady. Um, I it's not important that she's tiny, but like. Visually, it's like it's we're all funny. clashing in cultures and shit. At some point, we're going to be like, who gives a fuck? Let's just dance. Which <laughs> yeah. is sort of where it took me like 95 beers to get there. I but think the office taught us that. What's that? Oh, yeah. Um, New girl. Uh, so, we're dancing. We're there. And then suddenly, I'm in someone's backyard <laughs> chain smoking. Can you throw up that photo? Yeah, I guess so. 
Yeah. So we um we had another party we said we'd go to. So I knew we were going to be going to this person's house party, which was close to our house. But like the wedding was 45 minutes from our house. The house party was 10 minutes from our house. Yeah, so we were just going to swing by on so the way yeah, home. Swing by and just pop in, say good day at this party. I n- knew I would have had one or two drinks. I didn't think I would be so fucked up. You sliding in like risky business. <laughs> I did. I really came into the party f- ready to rock. Like I was. Yeah, you, it's the point where I'm like, I'm coming in and I'm like apologizing for you. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice to like like not be worried that I was behind when I got to yeah. the party. Like people were ahead of me. I felt like I'd been at the party all night. Yeah, fuck. Did I do or say anything really bad at the party? No, no, you just chain smoked. Oh, good, good, good. Because I remember I totally forgot as well that Ryan and Dan were there. Yeah. And I don't, like thinking about the entire night, I, I definitely spoke to them a bunch. I don't remember any of it. Yeah, we all just kind of just sat around talking shit. Nothing, Sweet. Nothing important. Yeah. So that was fun. That was fun. It was, yeah, it was a friggin' long day. It was a long weekend. It was a, too many social activities, but I felt I felt like I'd achieved something by the end of it. You know? Next morning, I was up at 9.30 for the stream as well. I did it. You did it. It hurt. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you would have been pretty dusty. Yep, I got up. I thought I was going to vomit. Had a crack so and headache. You didn't vomit at all? No, I didn't vomit. I just had that, like, whatever that thing is. It's not Barocca, but it's like Barocca. Yeah, it's like a little hydrating. The hydrate thingy. one, and I had the vitamin B one, and I had two Nurofen and ate half a wrap, and I was ready to go. Right as rain. I was right as in like an hour. I was on the stream, and I, I started the stream like, this is not going to go well, and by the end of the stream, I was regular. It was, uh, it was My perfect. My boyfriend, regular. At, At last. last. So, yeah, fun weekend. Really fun weekend. It was. And hey, it was, it was great to do it all with you. Yeah. You're the best. It was nice to have a... A fun week, and I'm glad that you're now like a bit, bit more ingratiated with my high school friends. Yes, I feel like I can hang out with everybody sober and be less like, like who do these people want me to be? You know, when you like meet people for the first time, you're trying yeah, to yeah. you're trying to work out who you are around them, what your rhythm fits into their thing, um, wanting to make a good impression. Mm. Yeah, no, I think we're past that now. Yeah, well past that. Yeah, yeah. I'm not worried. They know who I am now. <laughs> I can just like I could be quiet. I can be loud. They know who I am really. Mm-hmm. Which is always always comforting with On the a, with a group of people. Yeah, yeah, and I like them all. Every single they one are, of them. They're all good. They're good. People. Every single last one of them. Yeah. Re Sam Haim. I've done well. Love the boys. Love those boys now. Love, Love them, them in, boys. intimately. <laughs> Maybe they can start uh, inviting us on their river trips. <laughs> I don't love them that much. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah. We'll have our own river trip with blackjack and hookers. You know, it's fuck the river trip. Um. So that's been our little uh, adventure over the last couple of weeks. Um, and now I'm having, and it was uh, all that as well, that 8 a.m. wedding got messed up my sleep schedule again because I'd, I'd only been to sleep at like 6 and up at 8 and I mean, had a nap in the middle of the day. I can't get my body back to normal. Yeah, now your body is betraying you and yeah. everything hurts. And well, it hurts because I pump and hard. You had like your neck True, yeah. killing you for days and days. Yeah, when I wasn't sleeping. Um, yeah, really, um, you not getting sleep really piles up very quickly for you. I feel like I can get away with it a little bit and sort of bounce back the next day, but I think it takes a, more of a toll on your body. I am a little bit older than you. <laughs> well. <laughs> I shall have your wedding, everybody. It's late. It's late, and um, I haven't slept very much. Um, we got to fix that. How are we going to fix that? Nah, it doesn't matter. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a bit hard. I, I've got G-Stream coming up and everything, so there's going to be a couple of late nights, and I'm just getting up earlier. Like, every day I'm getting up earlier than I did the night before. Um, and last night I went to bed an hour earlier. Like, it'll line itself back up yeah. eventually. Yeah, it'll be good. We'll meet in the middle somewhere. Um, we've been working on a big sketch for G-Stream. Looking forward to that. I don't know if we should talk about this, because it's like, what's the point? G-Stream... What, uh, so... This comes out next Saturday. Next Saturday will be the live one. No, okay. So when this episode comes out, today is G Stream. <gasps> wow. If you're listening to this, we're probably live right now at twitch.tv forward slash the real G Matt. I can't believe it's your birthday. G <laughs> Stream, my birthday. <laughs> um, yeah, so we were, we, we're coming up with this sketch. I don't know if this will be the end result. Um, but the sketch that we're going to do... Don't give it away. Yeah, but G-Stream's already happened. Oh, right. Well... Like, this doesn't come out till, you know, 
the same time G-Stream starts. Yeah, okay. I guess probably they're going to watch that before they listen to this. So the plan is something like I'm an arsehole. Like every, all of this is fake. I play a character and then like we stop the podcast and I'm just like a bossy arsehole. Who, and Ben's a little fucking pussy cuck <laughs> and he does all my editing for me. <laughs> Bex just like the ride and high side bitch who um, is just like the mob wife sort of yeah. thing just soaked in and Aiden is an, a British actor who's just been hired to play a, a Aiden. <laughs> That's very good. Um, and it's it's, very good. it's an amalgamation and a mess that it needs to all be explained in a very short sketch that precedes the live from Melbourne intro, the regular intro. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be re- really funny. Yeah, but we just don't have a lot of time. We have 11 days to film and edit this and also get G-Stream ready, which it just ain't, bruv. It just ain't. We just th- is, I haven't read the script, but is it just one room? We'll just need to bring some Yeah, props. one cam, one room. There's just a lot of lines. Anyways. We can um, do anything. Baby, we can do anything. Yeah. Setting up for G-Stream is going to be a thing. I think I'm going to have to, like, the night before, it's going to be like, I don't really know what I'm going to do. Get some sleep. There's a couple so days. So you don't throw up. <laughs> yeah. As a, uh, I don't know what. No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'll be getting stuff. I'm going to be taking Friday off, and that'll be the day I get the whole room set up and ready and everything. And then the boys will show up Friday night, ish. But yeah, and I'll be out clubbing. No, you. Oh, will you? I'm thinking about it. <laughs> didn't you already? Ha- didn't something come up where you couldn't do that? No, that was a different thing. I was going to go to. Okay. All right. Yeah. No, the night before G Stream, there's a. There's a. <laughs> I don't like clubbing, but sometimes I'll go if there's a particular DJ that I like. Yeah. And in this case, there is, and it's and they're international, so they're only here for one night in Melbourne, and it's the night before G Stream. So, I don't know. Probably knowing me, I'll end up not being bothered. Like I'll just say I can't be bothered, but I don't know. They might. There's the off chance I'll be feeling up for shenanigans, yeah. and then I'll be paying for it the next day. So we'll see. I think you should go easy. I just mean, I could easy. go and just not be out all night. Just yeah. go for a couple of hours. I mean, you said to me, you were like, do you want to go to this thing? I'm like, I can't. I'm setting up for G-Stream. And then the next person you invite is Ben. And I'm like, I, he's also, he needs to be here for G-Stream. And he's like, yeah, I'll go. And I'm like, for sake. I think I, no, w- w- I said, I think I invited him before we had the conversation. Oh, true, 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 yeah. true, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just flicked him the event. Um, So hopefully... He doesn't go. <laughs> cause I don't think so. He was lukewarm. Yeah. I really need him there as well. I don't want to make him not do something for G-Stream because there's already such demand on the two boys. Yeah, but demand I, don't, on, I don't really have to do anything to set up. I just, but it would be nice to have you there just so we can all be on the same page and it, uh, I get a little bit fucking... You're telling me I can't go? No, you can go. You can go. Obviously, you can go. I just get a little micromanaging. You'll just be disappointed. When it comes to G-Stream. And even if I it didn't use you at all the whole night, just knowing that you're there... Makes me feel comfortable. But go to your fucking little fucking thing where you do your shit. Go to your little fucking event. I want to twirl. Go twirl. I want to wear a shawl and I want to twirl. It's a Fleetwood Mac themed night. I Are you sure? I didn't add that. Huh? Are you sure? Doesn't matter. Um, let me take a look at my notes. I've been, uh, I've been, haven't been touching the notes for a while and it's just been like collecting and, um, did Harry Styles spit on Chris Pine or not. Did we get to the, the result there? I haven't seen any of the updates, if there are any. I do, uh, as of this date, I haven't seen any either party come out about it and say anything. Do you think Harry Styles spat on Chris Pine? I think there is evidence for both sides. I think kind of maybe. What's the evidence for the other side? Just that it would be an incredibly ridiculous thing to think you could get away with in front of lots of cameras and people. It's true. It would be a little It ludicrous. would take a massive amount of cockiness to want to do that in public. It would take the kind of person who gets up on stage in front of millions of people and gets screamed out like he's a god, which yes, he does. Yes, very possibly, yes. If that is your reading of who he is as a person, sure. I don't really know who, anything about him except the One Direction shit. Um, but I think watching – I've watched the video a number of times and – yeah, a case could be made. A case could a be case made. Could By the way, I don't. Be made. I don't think he's a cocky person. But I don't. Yeah, I've got but no idea. I could see a world in which he would be. The thing that sells it for me is Chris Pine's reaction. Yeah. I don't know what else you could attribute that reaction to. I mean, anything. 
There's like, but a, he looks he looks mad. He looks like he's suppressing anger. He's like he can't believe what's just happened. I see. I, I know see that it. could be confirmation bias, just sl- slathering that layer on top. Yeah, I don't see anger. I see like a, I see a f- almost a laugh. Like this is. But crazy. I think it's like a oh, okay, bro. Like we're about to fight, kind of laugh. Okay. And then I think I don't know because then Harry kind of sits down and he's like, I don't know if he's looking like, past, looks past him. Is yeah. he looking past him or is he looking like, are you going to challenge me on this? He's like. He's like he does this smile that seems like he's challenging him. No, I don't see him looking at him. I see him looking past him. But I think it. Yeah, I, so that's I what I mean. You could read it both like, of those ways. Like he, like I'm not even going to look at you. I'm going to look at your direction, and you're right there. I'm just spat at you. I'm not even going to look you in the eyes. That's the way I see it. It is a very strange interaction where the whole thing can be painted in the in this weird, ugly way. But I it's probably like, not what happened. I feel like I can see the muscles in his mouth do what they would do if he was spitting. Yeah, I'm wondering if maybe... But you can't see anything come out of his mouth. Exactly. So yeah, without that visual evidence of something actually coming out of his mouth or landing on sea pine, it's hard to know. It's hard to know. This that whole this whole saga is fucking hilarious. Though. Yeah. It really is. I don't see a reality in which that would be a funny joke either if it was just like... If it did happen and it was like, no, it's just a joke between mates, I don't see spitting on your friend. If it happened, it's because of all this drama because they all... All this, this cast of this movie all hates each other at the moment. <laughs> Look, I don't, th- I don't think it happened. I think it's a trick of the camera and him reacting to something unrelated and bad timing. I think it's all coincidental things going on to visually, if you catch it from the wrong angle, look like something that it's not. I hope one or both of them come out and say... What I mean, they have to. They're young people. They're terminally online like us. Chris Pine's not a young person. Youngish. He's be great. He's be forty now. He'd be. He'd have a Twitter or something, maybe. Yeah, but, but Harry Styles, at the very least, must know that this is going on. They both would know this is going on. Like, but him to come be like, I didn't spit on Chris Pine. People are like, oh sure, you would. Or say better, that. better yet, Chris Pine coming out saying I didn't get spat on. <laughs> Let me do a quick look up, lady. Did Chris Pine? Respond. Respond. Simon Cow says Harry Styles wouldn't spit on Chris Pine. Wouldn't. He wouldn't. He couldn't dare. Well, that means nothing to me. Harry Styles responded. His quote is true to something. Oh, clickbait. Just tell oh me what God. he said. This is our 10th show at Madison. This is him. This is our 10th show at Madison Square Garden. It's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful to be back in New York, says Styles. I just popped very quickly to Venice to spit on Chris Pine, but fret not, we're back. <laughs> that is something. Wow, that headline was right. That quote was something. And he did say something. And that doesn't, that sounds like he's just having a laugh now. That is more in line with the kind of person I thought he was, based on the very little evidence that I've seen. He seems like he's a happy-go-lucky, down-to-earth kind of person. So that didn't seem characteristic. But Chris Pine hasn't responded, by the way, but his representative has responded. Yeah. And said, uh, oh, fuck, this is way too long. Look, he said something. <laughs> okay, was it a yes or a no? I can't, I'm not scrolling through this 90-page article <laughs> that some dickheads run so he can put extra ads on his page so that I can hear him say, nothing happened and Chris is and Harry are friends. Best friends. Here we go. A video of Chris. I took place in my virus. I took place in my virus. See, this look up lady shit's not so easy. Chris's rep clarified that the two stars have nothing but respect for one another. Nothing but respect and a little bit of speech. Lewis Capaldi has revealed that he has been diagnosed with Tourette's syndrome. What has that got to do with anything that was happening? Because nobody's got an attention span. We've got to find out something else. Tell Chris, me something else. Chris Pine is a weird looking motherfucker sometimes. He is at the moment. He's yeah. got a weird look going on. It's very, he looks skinny. Not in a good way. Mm. He needs to get some thickness back on him. Anyway, so that's the Harry Styles content I've got for you. So you think no? No, I don't think he did. Obviously. I don't think so either. But I do think that it looks it looks a lot like he did. I just think, yeah, you're right. Just trigger the light. No. Yeah. I'll tell you, I ran into Holly's uncle at the pub. What's his uncle? My ex-girlfriend's uncle. <laughs> no, you didn't. Didn't I? Uh, Down at the bakery. Oh, and you sort of didn't really say anything. Yeah, he was just really sort of off. But he said a lot. I said, I, would, I couldn't shut up. Oh, really? <laughs> what did you talk about? I saw him. I was like, hey, when he came in. It was like, uh, <laughs> it was almost like, and this is also a possibility. It's almost like he knew he knew me, but didn't know how he knew me. Or he knew immediately and he just, 
I don't know. Maybe they have a family vendetta against you. There's definitely some sort of family vendetta. That that's obvious, but they I don't may. I don't know how far into the family it extends. <laughs> yeah, that would be pretty deep. <laughs> Uncle deep. Um so I take this is this even I don't know if this is even good podcast content, but he was super standoffish. Why start now? Why start now? It was super standoffish. It was um it was all like, Oh we oh good yeah. Like I was giving him lots and he was giving me nothing. Sort of thing. And he wasn't looking me in the eyes. Mm-hmm. Um. So, but it could easily and with time since it's happened. Immediately, I was like, "Oh, what the fuck, fucking dickhead!" Like, get over it. Um. But now I think it might be more of a. It literally has been like five years. Yeah. And and if he's an older gentleman, he may just have forgotten you. It's not crazy old, but he's he's in his fifties and. Yeah, you may. He just may have needed to make space for yeah. something else. And yeah. booted Can't you remember out. everyone's ex partners and stuff. No, exactly. And I would have seen him probably ten times in the time we were dating, like so. And I went yeah. to his house for things, like, like he would have if uh, back then if he'd saw me in public, he would have been. He would have said, "Oh, hey, Matthew, mm-hmm. how are you? What have you been up to?" And he knew what was going on in my life. But I can see a reality in which he's just sort of purged those that knowledge. Although you're not really a. You're a memorable looking person. Like you Why have, is that? You have a certain look. What? Because <laughs> you're so cute. Do I look odd? You look cute. Yeah. And handsome. Thank you. Um, yeah. I, but I don't know. Maybe I also might look different than I did back then. Yeah, probably. Look probably more handsome. Yeah, and more cute. More more cute and handsome. Um, but uh, yeah, it was it was weird. It was weird. You know that? Do you yeah. ever run into people from your past and it's just... Oh, I do everything in my power to. I'm <laughs> anytime I go out in public, I'm constantly scanning for anybody I might know so that I can duck and weave. Like I'm, I'm always that person who, <clears throat> if if I see somebody first, ninety nine percent of the time I am hiding because I'm just not interested. I don't. Even, <laughs> I don't want to do the nod. I don't. I don't want to risk the fact that that we're gonna have small talk. Like I just. That's so funny. I just don't like it. Unless it's somebody that I genuinely like and genuinely want to know how they're going. Oh, okay. All right, yeah. And then I will. I'll, I thought I'll it was let, just I'll let it happen. But if it's just if it's just some cunt that I knew a bajillion years ago that means nothing to me, I'm not going to step in the line of view and be like, G'day, mate. What's going on? So that time that we ran into, um, I don't want to say his name, but he played Sweeney Todd in that production of Sweeney Todd we went and saw. Yeah. And I was like, oh, Hey, hey! And I like yelled him down. Would you have avoided him, or would yeah, you? Yeah, I would have. Yes, but uh, we're not we're not great friends or anything. No, I just think that's funny because w- I'm as close with him as you are with him. And I I saw him and I was like, oh my god, hey! And I know that's definitely going to happen again in our relationship. But there's someone you'd rather avoid. And I'm just like, if you're there, that's totally fine. You're oh, okay. a buffer, and right, you can right. do most of the talking if you want to. I get so excited when I see people in public, but I will when I see someone who I don't want to talk to. I will avoid them. Like yeah. I'm not a crazy person. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of the time, what ends up happening most of the time is that I see them out of the corner of my eye doing exactly the same thing as me, is averting their gaze and pretending yeah. we didn't see each other. Even though we fucking clocked eyes 10 feet back. <laughs> we all know it. But we've all got too much else to do. No, no time to chat. No time. That's funny. I really like that. I like that about you. I'm just very introverted and sometimes I'm shy. Not always, but sometimes I just, I just feel like i got nothing to say. Be funny if you and I went out separately and ran into each other. Yeah, I'd avoid you. <laughs> I shouldn't have said the shopping center near where we live, but it's not even that close. It's just one that we go to. But um, would have been fine if you didn't say all that. <laughs> Triangulating. <laughs> Anyways, it'd be funny if if we went out separately and we ran into each other out in the public. That'd be odd, I think. It would be strange. <laughs> it's a it? setting that I don't... <laughs> like r- seeing somebody... Like I'm so used to seeing you every second of every day and to like I'm see you out in the world. You. I might not even recognise you at first. I would, but... Oh, that looks like that guy I see all the time. What's he doing? Yeah. Who's she? Mm. <laughs> <sighs> what else is going on, Bet? I got stuff I can talk about. We're going, we're talk also, about stuff. We're also pretty close to wrapping up. Talk, find find a note, pick it up, throw it out there. Um, I ran into Holly's uncle. <laughs> uh, what? I kind of wanted to say. What's his uncle? That's right. I made the same bad joke. I wanted to. Um, I wanted to. You know, I've been thinking about this. This is unrelated, but I've been thinking about those teenagers who barked at Ellie. Oh, same. I want to. I know I'm getting old because my hatred for teenagers is just yeah. growing day by day. I just have no time or patience for them anymore. And that makes me sad because a little piece of me has died. 
Um, I was the, the I was thinking about you when you do your school reunion. Yeah, going and touring the school. Mm. You're going to tour the school, like you said. I imagine like going through when there's students there, and I pictured myself doing that at my old school. And I'm dr- I'm dreaming of scenario in which I can make this happen, where I have to do that tour of school, and kids like, "Hey, man!" And I just go, "Shut the fuck up!" Like in their stupid, hi, grandpa. <laughs> stupid teenage faces. That you make- made anything of yourself? Shut up, wanker. <laughs> Yeah, own that child. Yeah, just be like, it'd be like eh, eh. oh, nice shirt. And I'd be like, suck my cock, you little fucker dip. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck did you just say? Climate change will wipe you out before retirement can. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you fucking die, you little shit. <laughs> Your parents failed. Um, probably shouldn't tell an underage person to suck my cock, but. Probably not. You will get in trouble. But uh, suck my cock. Um, yeah. So I don't, yeah, I've been thinking about this. These teenagers barked at Ellie through the fence yeah. the other day. I hope they try it again. She really, I finally understand what people say when they talk about their dogs and their animals being like kids. Because I felt, I felt like a mama bear for the first time in my life when those stupid kids were yelling at her. If I'd heard it when you said it, I would have run out there. And I was thinking I, about it. I don't it. know what I would have done. He only did it the one time, but he, I was, he had it kept going. I would have walked out there with something heavy. Yeah, I don't like that when you because when shit went. When people walk past the fence, she barks at them. If she's out there, which she isn't always in that part of the yard. Yeah, but also like a dozen other dogs in the Yeah, it's, in the and street. that's just what dogs do. Yeah, and she's, she's literally by doing. No, she's by no means the mo- the loudest or the most annoying. There's heaps of dogs in the street that are so much worse than yeah. she is. And it's that thing where like if sh- there was no fence, she wouldn't do anything, but she's protecting her property and her yard yeah. and stuff like that. She's just letting us know that there's people around. And you walk three more houses down and the ne- other dog will come up to the fence and yell, bark. Yeah, this is what dogs do. It's not a bad dog trait or anything like that. Shugi's probably one of the best dogs I've ever known. Most well-trained dogs. Ben's dog. The uh, s- sweetest, best-trained dog. She used, she did the same thing in that fence when she worked yeah. worked out there. She's just protecting just her property. Um, and, uh, yeah, so when people go, rah, 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 back at the dog, that's ludicrous. And that, mm. that, is, that, is, that warrants a kick up the ass, which I wanted to go and give. Get a life, you know. Honestly, get a life. So many, I just want to sit out there one day and just listen to the shit. Like when we'll sit. Can we take a day off together and just <laughs> sit by the fence and just with our ear, a little tin can next to it and just see what the neighborhood has to say? Remember when we were sitting at the dining, like that little table there, looking out the window, and there's people walk past and like pointed into our yard. Yeah, and, and like, you immediately were like squaring up. Like, I was like, what the what fuck? The fuck? <laughs> you, you pointers what away you, from my. They could have been pointing. They could have been nice pointing. Like, oh, that garden's so they nice. They weren't because they came around the corner immediately and didn't even really look at that point. It was like, hey, and that's where that fucking shit, like this, like, have you seen that shit there? That's the vibe I got. Maybe the person was at the climax of their story and the person there talking about is like oh why don't you fuck off back to over there that's not what happened and you, you know, never know. i don't know they were pointing at our iggy azaleas it could have had nothing to do with us or it could have been our pointy roses that the local gays don't like yeah but they weren't th- they were pointing into the yard not at the yard they were pointing in at something well like. you know our yard could be kempter i'm gonna kill him is what i'm gonna do <laughs> sure that's fair yeah i'm gonna kill him um there's some p- uh, point to that um oh, fuck now i've definitely lost the page there was a there was a point to what I was saying there and uh, and um, was, oh no it had nothing to do with it it was just another note that was in my head oh I'm glad <laughs> which is I'm gonna I also want to kind of save this for when Ben's here um, but me and Ben came up with this funny bit where like a doctor it's a doctor who like occasionally doesn't use doctor jargon where he'll be like um like. Uh, <laughs> Like, um, we're going to do a scan on you um, now, um, uh, Beck. Um, we want to um, we want to just make sure there's nothing going in your system because um, uh, well, you're, you're, you're representing, you're, you're, you're feeling some things um, uh, in your pussy that we want to make sure. If, so if you can just pop your legs up and um, just show us your pussy, we'll, uh, we'll just get in there. It started off with being like... Um, <laughs> Uh, and as you can see on this, the um, the the male ejaculates into the female. Uh, here you can see the egg, which is about to be um, inseminated by the cum. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. That's how it started. It's the element of surprise. With the doctor Good. saying cum <laughs> instead of sperm. 
And then it went on and on and on. Like, um, oh, yeah, yeah. I'd oh. actually go to my pap smears if they were like that. Yeah, so we'll do a quick exam. So if you can just get your tits out, <laughs> I'll do a quick All right, ma'am. Feed in the stirrups. Let's have a look at this little mew mew. <laughs> Hey, it's GMAT here, and don't forget, if you enjoyed that episode of the GMAT podcast and you want to hear more, we also have the podcast post show over at patreon.com forward slash the GMAT podcast. The post show is a shorter episode recorded directly after the main podcast where we wrap things up and talk about anything we didn't have time to talk about. $3 a month and cancel any time. We are a community supported podcast, so your support over there funds the show and makes it easier for us to keep doing what we love. If you want to support us, head over to patreon.com forward slash the GMAT podcast.